What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Patty the Batty saying he enjoys getting punched in his fights. Patty Pimblett was able to submit Jordan Levitt at UFC London just a few weeks ago. He called a shot earlier that week saying he would finish Levitt, who had never been finished before in his MMA career. Patty's slick rear naked choke in the second round put away Levitt, but in the fight, he did eat some shots and admitted he was a bit disappointed in his performance overall. In a recent appearance on the Pat McAfee show, Patty the Batty spoke about how he knew he'd be able to put away Levitt and admitted he was a bit too emotional going into that fight. Still, given that he did eat some shots, he did say that this is something he can sustain in his career. Case in point, this is what Patty Pimblett stated to McAfee about that. I could fight like that every time, lad. I could go, I'm, I'm a big fat bastard at the minute. But I could, <laughs> someone rang me now and said, get out of the statement. I'd be out there beating them up. <laughs> I enjoy getting punched and punching people in the face. It sounds very weird, but I enjoy it. Patty Starr rose even higher with this win over Levitt in front of his fellow countrymen. He went on to state in the interview that he's in no rush to fight the top lightweights, understanding how deep and full of killers the 155 pound division in the UFC truly is. The 27 year old Brit is likely going to fight in bigger shows in the USA, according to UFC president Dana White, who stated just last week that he feels Patty could rock the house in places like New York City, Boston, and of course, Las Vegas. What do you think of Patty the Batty's comments here? And who do you think would be a good opponent for him next? Dan Hooker calls out Tony Ferguson. It looks like Dan the Hangman Hooker is looking to return to the 155 pound division and is already challenging a big name. We last saw Hooker at UFC London back in March, losing to Arnold Allen in his return to featherweight 145 pounds. He was beaten in the first round by a TKO. The loss perhaps prompted him to think about making a return to lightweight, and he already has his sights set on Tony Ferguson. Case in point, Hooker reposted a photo of him and Ferguson and stated this. You want to play ball? Step up to the plate. He also tweeted out this. I'll smash your face in, Tony Ferguson. Ferguson last fought at UFC 274 this past May when he was knocked out by Michael Chandler in the second round by a powerful teep to the face. That loss was Ferguson's fourth in a row, dating back to 2020. Meanwhile, Hooker has lost four of his last five fights in that same span, including losses to Chandler and Islam Makachev. Do you want to see Hooker versus Ferguson? And who do you think would win this fight? John Jones welcomes Amanda Nunes to an exclusive club. Amanda Nunes was able to showcase her striking prowess in her rematch against Juliana Pena this past weekend at UFC 277 in Dallas, Texas. After five rounds, she not only avenged her loss to Pena and won back the women's bantamweight title, she also joined an exclusive club that includes some of the top fighters in UFC history. The Lioness's unanimous decision win over Pena this past weekend was her 10th title fight victory as she became the latest entrant into the club of double-digit UFC title fight winners. John Jones, who leads the pack in this club, acknowledged the feat and welcomed Nunes into the club. This is what he posted on Twitter about it. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Welcome to the club, Amanda. The list is led by Jones, who has 14 title fight wins, followed by George St. Pierre with 13 title fight victories. Demetrius Johnson and Anderson Silva, with 12 and 11 victories respectively, they round out the list. Nunes herself has the chance to surpass some or even all of these fighters, given that she's the only one who is the reigning champ on this list right now. She's also the only champ champ on this list. She did state after her win over Pena that she wanted to defend her women's featherweight title next time out, with UFC President Dana White saying that this was a very real possibility. Jones could have a chance to extend his record to 15 if an interim heavyweight title fight is up for grabs in this long rumored Stipe Miocic fight, which would be his divisional debut. If he wins that, then he will have more title fights in the future. What do you think of Jones's tweet welcoming Nunez to the club? And do you think when all is said and done that Nunez could actually catch up to Jones? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to stay up to date on all of the latest fight news.
Big John McCarthy reacts to Derek Lewis stoppage at UFC 277. There was plenty of controversy following the end of the Derek Lewis Sergey Pavlovich fight at UFC 277 last weekend in Dallas, Texas. Lewis suffered a TKO loss in the very first round, and what many people believe was an early stoppage. Lewis ate several shots in a flurry of strikes by the Russian heavyweight, forcing Lewis to hit the floor and the referee immediately ended the fight right there. Now, days after the bout, Big John McCarthy, the first UFC referee and a pioneer in his own right in the sport, agreed with the consensus that the stoppage was too early. This is what he stated in his weighing in podcast about it alongside Josh Thompson. You know that he has come back in fights where he has been hit and has gone down and, and you know the way that he does go down. He doesn't usually go to his butt. He tends to kind of go down towards his face, down ass up position, but he tries to fight his way through it. You got to give him that time. Big John goes on to say that he knows referee Dan Marie Gliotta was trying to protect Lewis, but that the Black Beast is a professional fighter and he wasn't getting messed up too much in the flurry and you have to let him work through it, despite the way he fell down. McCarthy also goes on to say that he doesn't actually think the result would have changed necessarily, but that Lewis, he just simply deserved more time to see if he could recover and who knows, perhaps turn the tide. The loss was Lewis's third straight in his home state of Texas over the last year alone, after losses to Cyril Ghosn and tied to Ivasa in his home city of Houston, Texas. Lewis has now dropped three of his last four fights since early last year his lone win coming against Chris Dawkins in December of last year. Do you agree with Big John here? Or do you feel the stoppage was warranted? And if the fight had continued, do you think Lewis actually would have won this fight? Kobe Covington earning some extra cash, winning $50,000 in Florida Poker Tournament. A bit of fun UFC fighter news now as top welterweight Kobe Covington won just under $50,000 US dollars in a recent poker tournament at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Out of about 7,700 poker players, he placed 7th in the tournament. Not bad. We knew Kobe was a savage in the cage, but it turns out he's also got serious skills on the poker table. He was spotted playing late into the tournament, donning some shades and a jacket. Check out this tweet here. UFC star Colby Covington makes the final table of record-setting poker tournament at Hard Rock Holly in Florida, beating 7,696 other entrants. He gets $48,298 of the $2.5 million prize pool for finishing 7th. Chaos apparently went all in going head to head against another player and had an ace of hearts and eight of diamonds versus an ace and king of diamonds. Colby, who is still ranked as the number one welterweight contender in the UFC rankings, has not fought since he beat his former best friend, Jorge Masvidal, at UFC 272 earlier this year. The result of that fight led to a physical altercation that took place just outside of a Miami Beach steakhouse a few weeks later. What do you make of this news? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.